So we continue, I mean, with the last presentation. And um, again, Ludo um, will present a, a talk to us. And it's about now, very specific, about the um, telluric absorption correction uh, in spectrum. Okay. Let me share my screen. Slide, no, format slide show, start from first slide. Okay. Do you see my screen and my mouse? Yes. Okay. So now let me do um, a very specific talk in which I uh, will present um, a tool that ISO offers that is called MOLECFIT and it is designed to remove telluric absorptions in spectroscopic observations. The, sign the signatures of the atmosphere, we'll describe them in a minute. So, MOLECFIT has been developed by a consortium in the Australian. It is uh, maintained now by and distributed by ISO in Austria, sorry. It has been designed in Austria. Okay. Mm, and maintained by a team in Australia. Um, okay. In um, astro astrophysical observation, in astronomical observation, you observe the photons that are coming from the source. But between the telescope and the source, you also have the sky. And you get the photons from emission lines of the sky and also from the continuum of the sky. On the top of that, the atmosphere absorbs the photons from your source. And this last bit is called, tel are called telluric features that absorbs the photons from your astrophysical source. And the topic of this presentation is to present you a tool that is designed to recover the original signal from your source. So I will not talk about sky emission or sky continuum. I will just talk about how to correct for absorption tellu telluric features. Uh, this is a figure that shows you the transmission of the atmosphere as a function of wavelength. If you are in this regime, uh, blue visible, you basically have the transmission to one, meaning that all the photons, oops, sorry, all the photons from the atmosphere reaches, sorry, all the photons from the, from the source reaches the telescope and they are not absorbed by the atmosphere. But the redder you go in wavelength, you see that you have a lot of absorptions, bands and features that blocks the signal from your source. This is very evident in the near infrared, but and the situation is even more dramatic in the mid infrared, where you see that there are entire portion of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum that are totally absorbed by the atmosphere. So correcting for the lure features is very important. Basically, the task is uh, you observe a spectrum like this, this one in blue that has some features. Those features that I have a light in red are not part of the astrophysical source, but they are given by the atmosphere. On the bottom, I show you the atmospheric transmission. You see that where you have a lot of absorption, you have the corresponding signature on your observed spectrum. The task is to recover the original signal of the spectrum. How do you do that? There are basically two main procedures that does it. The first is called the standard procedure in which you observe an object with known spectral features, for example, a so-called telluric star, possibly it has to be featureless. 
so you you know exactly know what the spectrum look like then you normalize it by the by its continuum and then you use you simply take this normalized spectrum and you use it to divide your science observations you take your science observation divide by the normalized telluric star and you get rid of uh, the the telluric features this has the the benefits uh, this technique has the benefits that you are observing the your science and the start with the same observational setup with the same instrument, but it relies a lot on the features of the um, of the star first, because if the star has features, you are not able to exactly recover its continuum. All the mistakes you do, you broadcast it to your science spectrum. And second, it requires precious telescope time. Especially if you want to observe the telluric star closing time to your science to maintain the same air mass characteristics. The alternative procedure is to model the atmosphere by fitting the observations. This is the topic of this talk. I will present a tool, which is a collection of executables, Molec Fit and Caltrans, that does exactly this. You take a reference spectrum, can be a star or your own science, you fit it with some models. You derive the properties of the atmosphere and you use those properties to retrieve, to derive the full transmission curve of the atmosphere. This transmission curve will be used to correct your data. As I was mentioning before, the, the tools are, consist basically on two recipes. One is called Molec Fit, which you use to derive the atmospheric model. The, the recipe can be run on your own science or a telluric standard star. It doesn't really need to be observed at the same air mass of your science because uh, the software takes account for the air mass difference between the star and the science. So you can simply observe one star at the beginning of the night, use that one for all the observation of that night. So it's a, a, a really a safe of, uh, of telescope time. And uh, Molec fit also accounts for instrumental setup, for example, wavelength calibration, line spread function, etc. Then the second, sorry, the output of Molec fit is a table with the properties of the atmosphere. Molec, for example, column densities of the molecules. The next recipe, Caltrans, will use the column densities of the molecules. The proper will use the properties of the atmosphere just fitted to create the full transmission curve. And this takes to account the full wavelength range of your observation, the air mass difference and the spectral resolution uh, of your science observations. There are two main um, strategies of running the molecular fit tools. The first strategy is molecular fit on standard. Basically, with this strategy, you use a telluric, the spectrum of a telluric standard star to obtain the atmospheric model. That's the advantages that you can um, select a very bright star and a feature as much as you want. So you can choose the, the, the target. This strategy is recommended if your science has low signal to noise. It has the disadvantages that the atmospheric properties of that night can change between the science and the, mm, the science observation and the telluric observations. Air mass difference is taken into account, as I said, but if the humidity changes, that's a little bit more uh, complicated. You need to get external information, for example, from a radiometer. The second uh, strategy is molecular fit on science. You can use your own science observation to derive the atmospheric model. It has the advantages that you don't need a telluric star for doing that because you, you use your own science. So the atmosphere deteriorating your science is the one you will be using to get the, the model. So you will correct exactly for what you are um, observing. The disadvantage is that it is this strategy 
basically is, is not a real disadvantage, it's a recommendation. So we recommend to use this strategy molecular fit on science on um, observation with high signal to noise, for which you can really obtain a very good uh, atmospheric model. You can really get the, um, the um, properties of the atmosphere uh, absorbing, absorbing your signal. Now, let me do a molecular fit live demonstration. I will uh, run um, reflex workflows that implement these two recipes to correct uh, um, um, telluric features in spectra. You can find uh, this workflow and the recipes in the usual uh, um, software uh, and pipeline pages of um, ESO. And okay, let me exit here. Okay. I have already called the workflow, so we can start. This is the molecular workflows. Let me describe you in a moment. On the very top, you see the usual uh, setup parameters in which you have to specify the directories where the data are and the directories where you would like the output to be saved, calibration directory, bookkeeping, uh, and etc global parameters here, everything that was explained before. The new thing of this uh, mm, workflow is that it contains some um, extra parameters that are specific to MolecFit and the workflow itself. First of all, here you can select the instrument of the data you would like to correct the atmospheric features for. In this very moment, uh, we support just a shooter and UVs, but the plan is to put all the instruments here. Note that, please note that this limitation is just of the workflow itself. The recipes are capable of dealing with all the instruments. And um, the Chemos workflow, for example, the molecular fit recipes are already included. So when you reduce chemos data, you can run molecular fit to correct for the lurk features. This is already implemented in the chemos workflow. For this general workflow, we support just a shooter in UBS for the moment. Future other instruments will be added in the future. Now here. You are asked whether you would like to use the science spectrum for fitting the atmosphere. Basically, it's, uh, you are asked if you want to run molecular fit on the science, which is uh, false here, or on the standard star. If you set it to true, you will be using a standard star if available in the data set. If you set it to false, you will use your own science to fit the atmospheric model, even if you have a telluric standard star in the data set. Then you have a very important parameter, which is called parameter initialization, parameter initialization. Basically, this workflow, if you specify this to true, can set the default recipe parameters to the best value according to the instrument. For example, if you select a shooter, if you set it to true, then the workflow will change the recipe parameters so that matches the extruder properties. If you specify here UVs, for example, and you run the workflow, then the recipe parameters will be initialized to the best match for UVs. If you don't want this initialization, you would like to, um, and you would like to use what you have decided, for example, you spend the entire night in setting up the best recipe parameter, and you do not want uh, this param parameter initialization to override your decision, you simply set it to false, and the workflow will use what you have decided in previous executions. Okay, now 
Let me start the workflow. I want to remove uh, Telluric features on Exshooter, reduce data. This is dealing with data that are already being reduced by the pipeline or that you can download from the um, ISO archive, science products that you can load, download from the archive. And I would like to use uh, the Telluric star, so this I set it to false, good. Tools, animate at the runtime. Okay. Let me press play. Initializing. Now, I am asked whether, okay, first I get a, a warning telling me that the parameter initialization is set to true, meaning that these recipe parameters, the molecules that I would like to fit, the wavelength region that I would like to fit, uh, some properties of the telescope are changed and set up depending on the instrument. So if this is the first time I'm using the workflow, I can simply say, yes, I would like to continue. I trust what the workflow is deciding for me. If I have saved recipe parameters and I would like to use my own decision, my own um, recipe parameters, the value that I have decided, then I have to, let's say, I stop the data reduction and I set the parameter initialization to false. Okay, let me stop now the data reduction. And uh, let me switch off this warning. So I can simply do this by double clicking here. Show warnings. No. So I don't get this reminder anymore. Okay, now let me start again. As you see, I don't get the reminder and I'm directly prompted to the data set. To the data set, to the data organizer that shows me what are the data sets. Data sets are just uh, executed data sets because this is what I wanted to reduce. So I, the first data set is that I can inspect it is a telluric standard star. Telluric stars can be used for telluric correction. So this is a, a standalone data set. I have a near infrared observation here. And for this observation, I have no telluric star, so the science itself will be used to get the model of the atmosphere. And I have another data set here, which is on the visual uh, regime. And for this one, I have the telluric standard star. So, and at the very beginning, I have selected the strategy that if the telluric star is present, I will use it. So now I will, as example, I will reduce this last data set. So we'll press continue. Okay, I'm prompted here with the spectrum of the standard star. So I have in blue the spectrum of the standard star. In uh, red and green here are the wavelength regions that are used by molecule fit to derive the properties of the atmosphere. You don't have to fit the entire wavelength range because it will cost a lot of time. You just need to select specific wavelength ranges in which you know there are atmospheric features. Uh, let me zoom. Here, if you properly adjust the zooming, you can judge the quality of the fit. This is not a real good fit because you can see that the, that the absorption features are not properly fitted. So you might want to change the recipe parameters in order to improve the fit. We'll do it later. For the moment, let's keep going. Let's move on. On the right side, uh, as Sabine explained, you have all the recipe parameters you can change for this recipe. 
I will not describe all the recipe parameters that you can change and what in their meaning. You can read the pipeline manual for that. If you press continue, the workflow moves to the next step, which is Caltrans. Now, Caltrans will take the, the atmospheric parameters that were determined before and will construct the full telluric corrections, the full atmospheric transmission. For example, it will understand what is the transmission in this wavelength region here, even if it was not used for the fitting. So it doesn't matter if you does not fit the entire wavelength range. You just have to fit particular locations where the molecules are giving their signature. On the top panel here, you will have the comparison between the extracted spectrum in blue and the corrected spectrum in red. You can see here that absorption features in blue here are corrected. Okay, you are left with a little bit of noise. You can do a better job, we'll do it later. Features and spike, you can see here, for example, this one, are not due to telluric, but can be cosmic rays, residual of uh, sky subtraction, etc. So molecule fit will not correct for those because they are not telluric features. Okay. Again, you can change your recipe parameters here. You can decide whether or not to use a different uh, line spread function to construct your own uh, telluric correction and these kind of things. Now let me continue and you are prompted again with a comparison between the corrected spectrum and the input spectrum. Okay, in the upper part here, you have the possibility to change uh, arms, uh, extensions of the fit file, but in the case of a shooter, you have only one extension, so you cannot change anything. Just concentrate here on the comparison between, in blue, the original spectrum that contains the loop features and the corrected spectrum. You can continue and you end here. Okay. As you saw before, the correction was not uh, perfect, so we might want to repeat the exercise and change recipe parameters. So let me do this again. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Uh, continue. Again, I am prompted with the model fitting window. Let me exploit the values of some recipe parameters that I have uh, uh, tested yesterday and they look reasonable. So I will change the wavelength inclusion. So I will add some extra um, wavelength regions, for example, to cover the central part that is not fitted. So I go to the recipe parameter, which is wave include, tells me it allows me to define the wavelength region would like to fit. Right now you have to enter the the, um, the, the definition of the regions in terms of start and start and start and by hand. We are working on having this feature. I mean, we are working on having this input by mouse click, not implemented yet, but we are working on that. Then let's say, I also see that the lines are not very well fitted. You see they are broader. The fitted lines are broader than the, the real lines. So I would like to change the lines per function, the model for the line absorptions that we would like to fit. 
so it's fitting. So at the moment, uh, Molec fit is, is using um, a Gaussian function to fit these lines. I would like to include also um, a box car. And I set the initial guess to 0.1. Oops. Then I will change the continuum, the, the order of the polynomial continuum. I rerun the recipe. Okay, you see that this portion here that was not there before has been included. And lines are fitted slightly better. Okay, it's not the best fit ever again, but are, it is better than before. So I'm, I need to rush a little bit. So let me keep going. Let me move it on. And same window as before. Okay, final result. Okay, what I would like to check now is uh, uh, whether the the last reduction was better than the, the previous one. So I have the two reductions here, which I forgot to write down the description. But anyway, if I look at the timestamp, this is the first reduction. So let me check the outcome of the first reduction. Uh, Inspect with so, so, fits you. Okay, I have the spectrum here. Let's say that I am interested in this uh, emission line for my object, but I cannot see it very well because there is a, there are a lot of residuals due to the Lurk features in this region. Then let's see if the changes I've made to the recipe parameter did a good job or not. Inspect with, again, fit view. Where is it? Okay, slightly better, not not extremely better, but slightly better. So let's say I am in the right um, path. So I can keep experimenting so that I can clean as much as I can the telluric features. So I have just one minute. I would like to just show you something. If you, as I said before, if you type UVS here, instead of a shooter, and you restart the workflow, you will see other data sets that are only UVs. And in this case, you don't have a telluric, uh, um, a telluric uh, standard star. Uh, OK. Shooter. Okay, you might ask yourself, okay, would have would have gotten a better result if I would have used the, the um, science itself to derive the model? So let's change strategy. Again, let me do it very quickly because I have uh, not much time. Okay, continue. Okay, let's change back the recipe parameters. I'm using the same as before. Okay, now I'm not using the standard star because I've changed the strategy. I am using the science itself to derive the atmospheric uh, parameter. That's why you see a different spectrum here. Um, box solution box. Rerun the recipe. 
Okay, if I continue with the workflow. Continue, continue. Now, let me inspect the very last execution, is the one I've done right now. You see that the line is better shaped. The residuals are less intense than before. Let me get back the spectrum of before, spec with SV plot. Okay. You see that for this specific case, if I use the science spectrum itself, I'm able to correct much better the telluric features here in the region that I'm interested. So bottom line is uh, there is no a unique uh, setup. You need to experiment a little bit. And the final decision on the strategy and the recipe parameters depend a lot on what uh, you are interested in. I stop here and I take questions. Thanks, Lodo. OK, we have time for a quick question <laughs> because the uh, the Muse uh, and UVIS and Gravity Reflex sessions are also about to start. So we take. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, hang on. So are there recipes for normalization as well? Is there a question from Thibault? Uh, there in the okay in the workflow, there is a Python script. Let me remember where I put it. That does the normalization of the spectrum. The normalization of the spectrum that is used to derive the atmospheric model. Normalization in the sense that it is scaled to its median value. If you're talking about normalization to the continuum, no, it, it is uh, not part of the molecular fit workflow. OK, thanks. OK, I don't see any other questions. Uh, well, hang on, now we do have one more. I think I should learn to wait a little bit longer. For the telluric uh, standard star, do you need to account for the radial velocities of the photospheric features? It's a question from Justin Campbell. The molecular fit recipe does an adjustment of the wavelength calibration. So if your telluric features are moved with respect to uh, uh, their nominal position, for whatever reason, a reason could be uh, physical reasons like uh, photospheric uh, features, velocities, blah, 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 or wrong wavelength calibration. This is taken into account uh, in the, um, the molecular fit uh, uh, recipe by adjusting the wavelength calibration. For the spectral resolution of acute, I don't think it makes a difference. 